welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, at the request of Patreon subscriber Elijah, I am playing Legacy. And this is a brew that started with the idea of Echo of Eons into Orcish Bowmaster to do a bunch of damage and attack your opponent for a lot off of a giant orc army. From there, we had to figure out what the other 52 cards were. And it turns out that Echo of Eons leans itself to play patterns that don't support cards like Force of Will because the best enabler for Echo of Eons is Lion's Eye Diamond, which discards the Force of Will before you get to cast your Echo. Another point of friction is that discard is not good with Echo of Eons, because if you discard your opponent's protection, then you Echo. Now they have seven new cards, and your discard got the Echo through, but then what? And then there's also the question of, how do we win the game with this Echo of Eons? Which means you want cards like Dark Ritual that make the game go really fast, or at least condense a lot of actions into one turn. And how do we get the Echo in the Graveyard if we're not incentivized to play a large number of Lion's Eye Diamond? There's only two here. Entomb gets it there. What else can we Entomb? Atraxa and Grizzlebrand. How do we use those in the Graveyard? Reanimate. And as all things in Magic, we've come back to Scam. Which, this does look a lot like Rescaminator, but I promise it's pretty different and plays very different. While Rescaminator is looking for opportunities to lock in stability, this build is kind of looking for opportunities to spin the wheel and explode any stability it may have earned in favor of trying to get a big win out of nowhere. Some weird choices in the deck. Let's talk about them. Only two Lion's Eye Diamond. That's because LED is only actually good with Echo Vions, And the rest of this deck doesn't really want that to be happening. One Goryeo's Vengeance. This is a kind of residual piece of an earlier build of the deck that used Shallow Grave or Goryeo's Vengeance to kind of tin fins your way through. Like, you play Grizzlebrand, you attack, you draw 21 cards, and then presto, you win somehow, all in one turn. That build wasn't really supported that well, especially once I added Grief to the mix, because Shallow Graving a Grief is not as good as a Grizzlebrand, and you want to use Grief to clear the way for the Shallow Grave. And then everything gets weird, because Grief ends up on top of the Grizzlebrand in the graveyard. So I decided to go with the one that targets the Legend. One Liliana the Veil, what's going on there? We're a Dark Ritual deck, we're a Lotus Petal deck. Accelerating out Liliana is still pretty disruptive, and she's a backdoor for if you draw an Echo of Eons or one of your monsters, because we're not playing the full boat of Lion's Eye Diamond. I would rather have Liliana the Veil, on average, in a game of Legacy in my hand than Lion's Eye Diamond. And here we get kind of to leverage the Dark Ritual mana denial part of the deck, while also enabling the resource explosion part of the deck. Basically, we're on a fancy-looking yacht held together by duct tape, but I'm excited for it. This is... Like, you could just play Rescaminator, and that would be a better deck. You could play the Epic Storm, and that would be a better Echo of Eons deck. But I think it's fun to try to solve these weird puzzles and do something different the ultimate goal with this deck is to echo into a Bowmaster or the one of Hullbreacher and just GG your opponent. But there are other game plans here as well. Let's get after it. This is Elijah's Echo Storm Fins. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and old-school players. They now exclusively offer the Bosch and Roll community free, fully insured, and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets, and out-of-print sealed product. They upload new cards every Wednesday with weekly sale offers and reductions. Use my code BNR0723 to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over 341 euros, approximately $380. Scan the QR code or go to shop3 one tradingcom I'm on the draw in round one, and I can Dark Ritual out a Bowmaster with this hand. And here it is already. Lion's Eye Diamond just 
sucks here. However, Bowmaster Entomb LED. Actually, this is fine. Let's go. Uh, the Entomb makes the Lion's Eye Diamond good, where Lion's Eye Diamond does not make non-Entomb cards good. I don't know if that makes any sense, but this hand is almost horrendous, but it's powerful enough that I'm going to send it. Oh, we got some Doomsday in the chat. Okay. Let's see what we can do against this opponent. They've tutored a Doomsday to the top of their deck. What if I could Undercity Sewers and target them? That would be so sick. Target player surveils one. Fate seal you. That's not how the cards work. I'm talking nonsense. Draw for turn. Another Entomb. Okay. I have some options here. I'm going to play my Island and Lotus Petal and start with a Dark Ritual and see if or how they want to interact with me. I'm going to start with Bowmaster. Or would they counter Entomb? I'm going to start with Entomb, because that's the one that I can most afford for them to counter. All right, that just worked. Echo of Eons into the graveyard. Orcish Bowmaster on the stack. Ping you. Lion's Eye Diamond. Sack for black, because I have a blue, and I'd rather have black at the other end of this. Echo of Eons. And it was not countered. We are pod racing, which also shuffles away this doomsday, but gives them a fresh seven. Oh, yeah. Turn one win. Let's go. Good way to start the league. OK, we're playing against doomsday. There are force of wills in the sideboard. The main deck doesn't really support them, and the plan is incoherent with them. However, if you are playing against a deck that's faster than you, it might be correct to settle in and be more of, you know, we've seen this juke out of Rescaminator to just be kind of a more normal deck after game one. And it's also, I appreciate the four defense grid and four force of will on the sideboard, because these are clearly not meant for the same things. If your opponent's slower than you and you got a jam, you bring in your four grids. If your opponent's faster than you and you got a chill, you bring in your four forces. Okay, where do I make room for force of will? As with most brews, this sideboard is not mapped particularly smoothly. It's just kind of cards that looked like fun. I could slow down on Dark Ritual. I could cut a Lion's Eye Diamond. It's tough to cut an Echo because that's also part of the, the very small blue count in this deck. Yeah, there's only like 16 blue cards in this deck. You really want 20 or more to support Force of Will properly. But we're going to try. Maybe I can't cut an Echo. Uh, Troll of Kazadoom can go. Bowmaster is great. Oreo's Vengeance, getting a haste creature is actually sick against Doomsday, because if they make a pass the turn pile and you can just crack for seven, that might kill them. Maybe I shave Chrome Mox when I'm slowing down. Keep my blue count high. If I'm bringing in Force of Will, which is a two for one, in the wrong direction, so is Chrome Mox. And if we're trying to slow down, we don't need the speed of Chrome Mox. Could even up my blue count further with getting some Brazen Borrowers in over a Dark Ritual or two. But I do like the ability to keep up on speed. Yeah, let's go. Forces in. Some random stuff out. Okay, there it is. Force of Will. The unexpected, but here, Force of Will. Leyline of the Void. Got me. Undercity Sewers. Spinning another Leyline. The Nuts. Yeah, my Brazen Borrower should be in. I'm going to play Underground Sea and pass. I can Dark Ritual out this Bowmasters if they start cantripping. And I can play around Daze on a Force of Will. Carpet of Flowers, gross. Blue in the pool, Brainstorm. And a Dark Ritual in response to Brainstorm. Try to cause some pain here. Old Bowmasters. For your face. Take a million. And the Brainstorm resolved. They're taking a bunch. They didn't fight over the Bowmaster. I wonder if they would if they could. But that, that makes good news for this force. And the Ley Line means Echo is basically a free pitch here. Undercity Sewers, let's go. Give me some of that sweet selection. Grief. I'll leave that on top. In for five. I can actually brainstorm now and grief them. I'm going to do that. They put back... Or, or I'm going to actually put back reanimate and island. And then I'm going to grief them pitching Gorios. I could ritual out the grief next turn, but I'd rather just disrupt them and make them dead while I have this advantage that I do have currently. Yeah! <laughs> Woof! Okay, I don't know if this deck is good, but we certainly won this match very quickly. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online.
Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play in round number two, and I do have a turn one grief if I'm interested. I'm going to keep the hand. This is on the fair side after we just nutted on our opponent last round. I think I'm just going to play sewers and see what shakes loose here. Underground C, I don't need that. And I am going to play Lotus Petal in case I need to emergency brainstorm. I don't want to pitch Leon into grief. I'd rather just cast Leon in next turn. Ponder from the opponent. It did not shuffle. Bowmasters, that card's good. Okay, uh, I will just pass now. I still have hopes for this Liliana. Maybe pitching her to grief is correct, but I like what's going on here. A little surprise Bowmaster for your ponder. And by surprise, I mean not a surprise at all because this is Legacy, and I have two mana up, and one of it's black. Boing. Hey, they did not shuffle. Take another ping. And I get a turn. Another island. Two basic islands. What's going on over there? Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm going to brainstorm and hopefully find a black card that's not Liliana. Okay. Put back Echo and... Oh wait. Uh, Echo... Yeah, Echo belongs in the graveyard. It's a good plus for Liliana next turn. Put back... I could put back Entomb and just play this game fair. But the Entomb for Echo is such a sick line next turn. All right, I'm going to put back Echo and Entomb. And I'm going to Grief Pitching a Grief. See what's going on over there. And if their hand is somehow just Berserk crazy, I can Brainstorm into another black card in the Entomb. Oh no, I just pitched the Grief. Never mind. Can't do that. Okay, we're playing against Mind's Desire High Tide. This is a deck that probably struggles with Orcish Bowmaster. At least I have to hope it does. This Echoing Truth is pretty good. And if I take the high tide, they're just in the trash, right? Spellseeker's another high tide, though. I think I actually want to take Echoing Truth, as weird as that is. Because they have to get through two Bowmasters if they don't have Echoing Truth. I might have gotten too attached to this Liliana. It's probably right to pitch her to the Grief and then still have another Grief available. Sapphire Medallion. That's new. Okay, I think I want to brainstorm in the end step. They put back Echo and Ponder. I can Entomb Echo right now, and then if I draw a Mana Source, I could send it. Entomb Echo of Eons. Draw for turn. Brainstorm. Disappointing. Attack you with my stuff. Echo's in the bank for next turn, though. Hey, they're probably going to lore and Revealed here. Yep. They could High Tide straight into Mind's Desire for two here. Spellseeker costs two. All right. They may have figured it out. Cloud of Fairies. Yikes. Okay, that's worth some mana. I wonder if they have some kind of deterministic infinite with Spellseeker, or if that is just more high tides in the deck. I currently know their whole hand, though. I got that going for me. Spellseeker. Yeah, it's just another high tide. High tide. My Undercity Sewers taps for three right now. And they can have... They can hardcast force here. That sucks. Okay, Mind's Desire, Trigger... I'm going to let the Storm Trigger happen. And I'm going to make black and then also get two blue. I'm going to try to brainstorm here. See if they want to fight over anything. They don't. I'll finally give up on Liliana here and put this in Tomb on top of my deck. And I'll try this backup Bowmaster. I hate that they can hard cast Force right now. Maybe I was supposed to pick a different spot. Like when they cast the second High Tide. It does tap them out to do this. Or maybe they don't care. I'm actually going to ping Spellseeker so they can't get any loops going, if that is a thing that they have. All right, here we go. Blooded Strand, Force of Will, Misty Rainforest, Snap. One more. One more to roll them all. Time Spiral! Oh, okay. Well, I still have a Bowmaster. They can snap one of these. I have two. Yep, snapping the Bowmaster is happening. They go to four, and then they have the fresh grip and ready to go. Oh, that was that was one flip to rule them all for sure. All right, well, 
Now we're just spinning. If their seven cards can answer a Bowmaster, they're going to win. I am going to take out the Cloud of Fairies just for snap considerations. I don't think four is much different than five on this board. But a Cloud of Fairies might be different than not a Cloud of Fairies. Ponder. I guess if they're going to slow, like, easy cantrip like this, four might be different than five. The Ponder shuffled. That's good news. Another high tide. That's bad news. I'm out of islands to tap. Desire for 12. Here we go. 12 is a pretty good number. There's a snap that answers my Bowmaster. Another Cloud. Ponder. Mine's Desire. All right, we're done. Okay, okay. A little short there. I needed my Desire to miss one more time. Okay, so my Force of Wills can come in. Or I could go Defense Grid and try to shove. Because my deck's a lot faster than theirs, at least theoretically. Yeah, I think I'd rather be the Grid deck on the play than the, the Force deck. Because they're built to be a Force of Wills. A Troll of Kazadoom can come out. I want all the Echoes. I want everything that's fast if I'm going this build. So probably Liliana. I'm sorry, I love you. And in Tombs reanimates, Scorios all staying in. Dark Ritual staying in. I could shave my Ponders. Just focus on blasting. I'm trying it. And then if we get a game three on the draw, I'll try to do the other thing. Uh, this hand does not do anything. Gonna mulligan. Uh, this hand is not great either. What does this do? I have Entomb Reanimate, but no protection for it. I also can't do it on turn one because that's Chrome Mox and not Lotus Petal. I could keep an Echo, exile it, and maybe have a turn two Hall Breacher. I think I have to hold on to Entomb Reanimates if I get them. I'm going to keep this in bottom one of the Echoes. Scalding Tarn and... Do I Chrome Mox now? I don't think so. They're not going to have days. Bonder. I'm going to let this resolve, and then I'm going to Entomb. They chose to shuffle. Underground Sea, Entomb. Put the Grizz Father in the graveyard? Or would I rather have Atraxa? Atraxa actually sees more cards than Grizzlebrand when you reanimate it at 19 life. Because Atraxa sees 10, Grizzlebrand sees 7. Yeah, I think Atraxa is probably better. Island, reanimate. I'm just going to send it. They can force this or interact with it. Cool, we're in there. I've got a Grief. That's what I was looking for. I've got Artifact, Defense Grid, or Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, okay. If I take Dark Ritual, can I Hall Breach them this turn? The Atraxa just resolved, which makes me think that they might not have interaction. So if I exile, how do I would have to exile Grief to Chrome Mox, cast Dark Ritual. Yeah, I'm going to try this. The safe play is to just grief them. The hero play is to uh, do what I'm about to do. I can also just exile... Nope, I can't exile the Dark Ritual and cast the Dark Ritual. That's not how these cards work. Okay, uh, Dark Ritual. All Breacher. Lion's Eye Diamond. Sack for Blue. Echo. Moment of Truth. Have they been holding back on me? That <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, when this deck rips, it rips. I think I'm going to flip over to Force of Will on the draw. I did cut some blue cards. I cut two Ponders to bring in the grids. If I want blue count up, how do I now manipulate this? Should probably respect Graveyard Hate a little bit and cut a Gorios. And don't want to cut an Echo because we're talking about blue count here. But with the Lilian out of the deck, drawing Echo is a lot worse. Right, maybe I'll just play one Ponder. Like I said, this sideboard is not mapped optimally, but we're vibing here. This hand can brainstorm and then cast Dark Ritual on turn one. That doesn't look like it's enough. I'm going to mulligan. Uh, this hand can turn one Bowmaster plus Echo. I'll keep this. A bottom Grizzle Brand. Island Ponder from six cards. It's kind of fun being the Force Check deck versus a combo deck. I'm actually faster than them, but they're more stable than me. They shuffled their ponder. Let's hope they kept... I don't know what I'm hoping for. But I'm, if I resolve Bowmasters, I'm pretty happy with that. And if Bowmaster gets countered, then I just don't send the Echo. But if Bowmaster resolves, now I can also Echo. I end up Hellbent, but Bowmaster's pretty good against this deck. Whoop, here we go. 
Okay, they did have Force of Negation. That makes sense why the Bowmaster resolved. Okay, now it's Bowmasters versus the five guards in their hand. Got to ponder into it. Let's go. Tick tock. They did not shuffle this one. Land or Dark Ritual are the things I would like to draw. Cool. Drew the land. Now bounce spells don't answer my Bowmaster because it has Flash Rooney. Bang. It'd be sick if they had like Phantasmal Image. I play a lot of CEDH where. You play a ton of clones in a lot of decks just because clone is such a good answer to Bowmaster. It kills the Bowmaster you copied and then you have one and your opponent doesn't. Oh, it's party time. Let's go. Cloud of Fairies. We're going to see a desire for like four here, probably. I guess against High Tide, I didn't even need to draw a land because if they start comboing off, I can answer. I can replay Bowmaster with one Underground Sea. Are they tutor to snap? They're probably going to snap their own Spellseeker or Fairy here. Yeah, I think they have Desire in their hand and they're just building Storm. They're not trying to answer the Bowmaster, they're trying to win through it. And we're going to Desire for six. There it is. Here we go. R and Jesus take the wheel. Force of Will, Brick. Fairy Macabre, Brick. Mystic Sanctuary, Brick. Force of Negation, Brick. Ponder. Eh, might get there. And last one, Cloud of Fairies. Okay, well, the Cloud can untap two lands, and we'll see what Ponder does here. That Cloud was actually huge. Ponder. I'm going to ping the Spellseeker off this Ponder trigger. They may or may not, may not actually have any tricks with that, but it is the, uh, the card that I can kill that is different than a card they could play. I'm going to have to beat this 2-2 Flying Fairy Macabre, though. I'm not exactly at like free roll to do that. They did not shuffle, that's bad news. Think Spellseeker. Okay, they got five mana to play with now. If they time spiral, I do get a fresh grip. And I have four mana available. Oh, weird. What did they keep their ponder based on if the plan was to play a 2-2 and pass? 3-3 three, three is still the biggest thing in play. And their life total is starting this race much lower than mine. Okay, no attack or block. If they snack, snap the orc army, that does remove the pressure and they could start winning the race. Okay, now they're ready to double block. Okay, that's fair. And stability has been achieved. I'm not sure who this favors, though they did keep a ponder recently. Cycling Lorien revealed. Oh, I should have been fetching my uh, surveil land this whole time. I've just been busy doing basic limited combat math and forgot to do my powerful modern and legacy interaction of card selection in my mana base. Bam! Grief would be insane. Uh, force of Will, 3-4. If they cast a High Tide, I can get two mana. All right. I'm going to put Force on top because if they High Tide, I can Dark Ritual and fo cast Force. And I think they need to High Tide to win. However, if nobody's attacking anyone, this is good for them. Okay, I'm going to brainstorm, try to break this open. Another Bowmaster is pretty good at doing that. Bowmaster and Force, let's go. I'm going to put back Chrome Mox and Force of Will. Or I'm going to do this in the other order. Force of Will, Chrome Mox. No, uh, the Force is right. All right, did it right the first time. And I think I should Dark Ritual out the Bowmaster now and start pushing damage. Okay, This kills the Fairy. They could snap it. I have Force, and now, now they're under real pressure again. And they can't Time Spiral here because they get 14 They have to do something else first. And we did it! We're 2-0! Unreal! Let's go! Introducing Club GG the mobile platform that lets you create your own poker clubs and play with your friends anywhere. Creating a club is easy. Just download the app, set up your club, and invite your friends. If you're looking for more competition, Club GG offers an optional subscription model, giving you the freedom to choose. Becoming a Club GG member unlocks access to compete for real prizes at a fixed monthly fee and no additional cost to play. Download Club GG now and join thousands of fellow poker enthusiasts. Use code Bosch for a free seven day trial standard membership. Club GG, where the fun of poker meets the thrill of competition. Suitable for adults 18 and over, visit us at clubgg.net. Opponent said, Hi, YouTube. Everyone say hi, Double Strike 2. 
I'm on the play for round three, and I have a Dark Ritual and an Entomb. I could just wheel here. I don't think that does anything, but I really like Brainstorm as a magic card. It may surprise you to learn. And I can even use Entomb as a Shuffle 4 Brainstorm, which means I can just main phase this baddie right now and see what happens. You could do something like draw, reanimate. Okay, I'm going to put back Chrome Mox and one of the lands. And I'm just going to try to send it here and win the game. Dark Ritual. They appear to be f 6 We'll see if that holds. Atraxa. Reanimate Atraxa. And I've got Grief plus Black Card. That's the important part. Grief plus Gorios. That's the instant. Chrome Mox versus Lotus Petal. I think Lotus Petal is a better artifact. Ponder is my sorcery. Underground Sea is my land. Dunzos. Oh, wait. Three, four. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If I take Dark Ritual instead of... I can just cast Grief right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> Turn one win. Don't even know what my opponent's doing. Okay, cool. That was fast. Uh, we don't know what my opponent's doing. We saw them mold a six and then not have any zero man interaction. They could just be a blue deck. Uh... 60% of the time, they don't have a Force of Will on their opening hand, or they could be some non blue deck. I'm going to choose to read Malda 6 Do Nothing Scoop as a low interaction non blue deck for which I want Force of Will to protect against. And I'm going to hedge a bit against Graveyard Hate. Not a lot, but a bit. I could just bring in Brazen Borrowers as a package with the Force of Will. They know what I'm doing, but I don't know what they're I don't know what they're doing. They have the advantage right now. If I go down to two echoes and one Atraxa, that's enough targets for Entomb that I'm not embarrassed, but I'm also that's a lot of the graveyard package out. It's five cards out that care about the graveyard stuff. Okay, I'll try it like this. I'm not doing a full juke. Okay, opening hand contains Atraxa, Liliana, and Reanimate. The combo. I am a mana source away from enabling this, and I do have Force Blue card. I'm going to keep this. I think the Force Blue card, like pitching Atraxa, is pretty easy money. That's the only big O that's still in the deck, so Reanimate only gets scam things now, like Bowmasters and Griefs and stuff. Cavern of Souls. I was trying to bring in the Force of Will over Goblins. Yikes. Chalice on one. Okay. Well, I don't really want to play against that card. I'm going to pitch the Hall Breacher, actually, because now that I know they're goblins, I would rather put Atraxa into play. And if I draw Dark Ritual right now and get to Liliana the Veil, reanimate, I'm going to lose my shit. Okay, Entomb. Uh, not quite the same thing, but it is fun. Um, I could Entomb reanimate a Grief here and just try to slow them down. Okay, let's look at my deck. Uh, I have Griefs and Bowmasters. Okay, I'm actually going to Entomb and reanimate a Grief here. As unsexy as that is, my opponent has three cards in their hand right now. One of them might be Surgical Extraction. Oh, but it wasn't. Broadside, Broadside, Pyroblast. All right, I'll take one of the Bombardiers, which also gives me a target for my next reanimate. Okay, Basic Mountain. Come on, Dark Ritual. Oh, Master, shit. Okay, lands are good draws, Dark Rituals are good draws. I would take Chrome Mox here. Any mana source gets a Bombardier in, but they need another permanent before they can start doing stuff with it. Okay, so we're both kind of all in here. They're aller in than I am. Uh, fully empty here. They can throw their Chrome Mox at my Grief to stabilize the board. I'll be interested if they do that, because their deck is going to have a hard time casting spells if they do that. I'm also behind on the race because I reanimated. Okay, a land stabilizes here. I can... Just beat this thing. Sick. Okay. Orcish Bowmaster will trade off with Bombardier. And then I'm going to try to draw a mana source for Liliana. Fetch. Underground Sea. Bowmaster. Going to ping the face because I have to block with both anyway. Menace action. And my next land goes Liliana Town. Let's go. <laughs> Are you even ready? Look at the value discarding a Traxa here. And they discarded a third broadside, which they could have played if they didn't kill my grief. And now they have to draw mana sources and then threats in that order. 
because any threat they draw they can't cast like that name sticker goblin gets dumped okay they found one that's actually pretty good i forgot to do my surveil land again hope i'm not punished all right plus i'll remember to surveil this time but they do have four mana if they draw a ringleader here they could get right back in it Rabble Master is also really freaking good because it naturally insulates itself versus Liliana. And they are putting pressure on Lily. Okay, uh, Bone Master is a great draw. Reanimate's a great draw. I get two looks at it with my Surveil Land and Tomb. I for sure don't want to Echo of Eons right now. Well, let me think about it. I got my opponent down to Hellbent. I would have to tap out to do this. If this Rabble Master sticks around much longer, I'm going to lose. I can't get them. Well, like, no, I, I can't. No, can't do it. All right, Graveyard. Come on, deck. One of my many good cards. Wander, we've got a chance. Find a Bowmaster. Dark Ritual Brainstorm. Brainstorm sees one new card here. That's not enough. I got to shuffle this. That sees the same one new card, but it doesn't lock me into other shit. Bummer. All right, I'll make you sack a creature, and then Lily's going to die in combat. Okay, we are going to fall behind here. This is the problem with Pox-style decks. If you get behind, you just lose. Goblin Matron, sure. Probably grabbing a Ringleader, because they can clear Liliana. We got another Rabble Master. Okay. That is really good against what I'm doing. They attacked Lily with both. They didn't have to do that, because Rabble Master was enough on its own. Come on, reanimate. Brainstorm. It could be anything, even a reanimate. <laughs> oh no. Didn't need that. Okay. That was that was a fun tight one. It did require a sequence of uh draws in the correct order from the opponent to get to that point. Okay, now we know they're goblins, which could expect Leyline of the Void and Unlicensed Hearse. Chalice of the Void. I do have a Hercules recall in the sideboard. I'm deciding. If I just want to try to send it against them. Echoes, Herx, LED. I have the Brazen Borrowers in to deal with a Ley Line. I can grief them before they get a turn if it's anything slower than Ley Line. Even on Lysen's Hearse with Ancient Tomb, Grief can get a poke or I can just have an insane hand. I think I'm going to go three Echoes plus Grizzlebrand plus Herc. I'm going to try to send it, but Echo is also pretty bad a lot of the time. Okay, let's try it like this. Well, keep. Please don't have Leyline of the Void. Bummer. Okay, I'm going to need a Brazen Borrower before this hand gets good. I found one immediately. Okay. Um, next turn, I can Brazen Borrow, Grief them, Echo. I can Grief them now. Oh, that's probably better. Sorry, Liliana. Grief you now. Make sure I don't just die. Name sticker ringleader. I'm going to echo all this shit away anyway. I'm going to take the ringleader just in case. Cavern of Souls. Drawing Brazen Borrower. And I'm just going to give us both fresh sevens, which clears the ley line permanently. Ley line's gone. LED. Blue, blue, blue. Echo. I have fast mana in my deck. Dark Ritual reanimate. Unfortunately, does not get me there in this circumstance. I am just going to play out my Lotus Petals in case they chalice me, though. I can actually cast a Trax the next turn if they don't chalice me. And giving a deck like Goblins a fresh seven. In seven cards is scary when they keep it on purpose. They could have a seven that doesn't do anything. Chromox pitching Shatter Skull Smashing. We have seen Pyroblast in their deck, which would be a bummer if I commit four cards to casting a Trax the next turn. Ancient Tomb. How far are we going? This looks like an X spell. Dang it. Can't catch a break around here. Maybe I'll just find my Hercules Recall again right away. Oh, there's more spells. Chill. Stop. A hey, Goblin Matron. Muxus. All right. I would love to draw a Grief or a Hercules Recall or the other Brazen Borrower. More one drops was not on the list of things I was looking for today. Probably just dead here. Yeah, that Chalice sucks. Casting a Traxa would have been the nuts. One man away from the Muxus. They could have a spirit guide. Yep, they sure do. Okay. Maybe it'll miss. Just full whiff. Four ley lines. Broadside Bombardiers. 
was found, but they did hit a bunch of shit that uh, is not goblins. I'll take that as a win. Even though I'm still taking three, four, five, and then whatever they decide to throw at me. Or three, plus whatever they decide to throw at me. The Matron's a pretty nice lava axe. I don't think I can beat this Bombardiers. I needed the Echo to be either slightly better for me or slightly worse for them. And it turned out to be, like, mid for me and phenomenal for them. I'm going to get some card selection rather than play Brazen Borrower. A 3-1 that can't block is not going to affect this game. Entombed to the Graveyard. And I didn't board in a Damnation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can cast a Draxa. Okay. Uh, Alright, I mean, I don't even know if this is going to be good enough. But it can happen. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There she is. Lion's Eye Diamond. Brainstorm. Scalding Tarn. Reanimate. Not very good. Nothing was very, nothing was ever going to be very good though. Play the Lion's Eye Diamond. This can cast Brazen Borrower. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I just lose here. They fling whatever I block with Atraxa, and the the Life Link never happens. But that was an exciting twist to a game that I thought was 100 percent dead, and I'm still dead. But at least I got to do that. Here come the jerks. They get a bonus jerk. Yeah, they just threw that at me, put me to one, and then I am dead. GG. We finally hit a small patch of run bads after running insanely good. On to the next round. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22nd, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxin. At 115 players, a place at a Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. I'm on the draw in round four with a boring little scam hand that I'm definitely going to keep. This could be a tier one deck, the hand that we're seeing right here. You can't even see the other 20 cards in the deck that are insane. Noble Hierarch. A card not usually seen in blue decks in the present day. Largely due to Orcish Bowmaster just killing it for freezies. I am going to grief them, exiling one of my thousands of Bowmasters. I would speculate what they're playing, but we're about to find out. Infect is what they're playing. Days Stifle. All right, my multiple Bowmasters can answer multiple. I have to take Days if I want to reanimate the Grief. So start there. That's obvious. Fetch. Underground C. Reanimate the Grief. And I can take... I think I just want to take the Brainstorm and make them do some work. If they draw a land, though, they will end up with a Blighted Agent at the end of the, end of the party. I'm, I'm going to take the Brainstorm, though, and I'm going to pass. The problem with Stifle is if they draw a land right now, they can Stifle my Bowmaster trigger on their Blighted Agent. But if they don't do that, I have a pretty clean lineup here. Just poke their, their life. Okay, Bowmaster. Hope they didn't draw Days. That's the only card I care about here. Take out the Agent. And then the beats begin. And then next turn, I don't care about days anymore. They could have drawn Invigorate to save their Lighted Agent. Like a zero mana pump spell does keep it alive. They haven't drawn a land and we got through the agents. Oh, cool. Uh, I could have played Brainstorm and Bowmaster both around days there, but I'm just going to cast my thing. Do they have an Invigorate? They do have an Invigorate. That's fun. Okay. I am not going to fight over that, and I no longer have an attack because their creature will just kill my creatures. I'm going to fetch before they can stifle and get the Undercity Sewers, try to set something up. Grief. Put that on top of the deck. I can cast it next turn. Oh, Grief has Menace. Never mind. I can, I can still push with Grief. The Bowmasters are not attacking them. Bowmaster and army. And fleshing out Invigorate when they're on low resources is pretty good, but they did stick an Infect Threat, 
which can snowball quickly. Royal Treatment. Target creature gains Hexproof until end of turn. Create a Royal Roll. Royal Roll is Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one, and Ward one. Okay, cool. I've never seen that card ever, but it makes sense in the deck. They can hit me for three poison. Cannot block this creature. There's the Grief. I am just going to cast it. Wait, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess in case there's some universe that they block with their Noble Hierarch, I should attack first. Okay. Gave them an opportunity to make a mistake. They could just stifle the Grief Trigger here, and then they have one card in hand. That has to be good enough for four poison damage. They do play a lot of cards that meet that criteria, though. Berserk doesn't do it. Invigorate does do it. Oh, well. They just gave me this. I no longer care about Stifle. I think they're supposed to Stifle this. Uh, just the taking away the option, because the only reason I would take Blighted Agent is if I care more about it. And if I'm worried about Stifle, I can take Stifle. Okay, so with the, the way the race is right now, if they play Blighted Agent, they can block two things. Two, two, one, one, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm actually going to take Blighted Agent, and they can keep their Stifle. Maybe they were worried about Days getting two for one. I guess I haven't really revealed, except for the Lotus Petal, that I'm not on traditional scam. And I could definitely still lose this game to an Invigorate. Cool, got away with it. Infect is what we're up against. Raisin Borrower and Force of Will are coming in. I think the reanimation stuff or i think the echo stuff should come out here i hate defaulting to cutting out parts of the deck that are the things that define the deck but when we're playing against a specific thing like infect who are very powerful and proactive and there's not a lot of time to goof around and i never want to give them seven cards i might want the hercules recall as well because ink moth nexus is an artifact i could cut chrome mox if i'm not echoing yeah, now I'm just reanimator scam. I'm fine with that universe. This hand is medium, but I will keep it. This is the first game, too, that Troll of Kazanum has made it to. Listener Elf. I hate forcing this, but I'm still going to. This Pocastic Force of Will into days on the draw against a, a tempo deck sucks so hard. It worked, though. Drawing a Traxxas sucks hard, also. Play C and Lotus Petal and pass. I can brainstorm and then cycle the troll to shuffle on my next upkeep. I could also cycle troll and get the undercity sewers, untap, brainstorm, put a Traxa directly into my graveyard. That's pretty good. I'm going to do that. Noble Hierarch. Do they have another elf? Okay, any turn they pass without an impact creature in play is a win in my book. They have shown me a stifle. If they choose to stifle this, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna get Undercity Sewers. Oh, come on, deck. Brainstorm. I had a cool trick, and now this stupid junk is happening. Put back Chrome Mox and Atraxa. And then I'll do the Atraxa thing, and then I can grief them. Pitching Grizzlebrand. Trax into the graveyard. Grief you. Veil of Summer's a blowout here, but I'm still sending. Light wow, they had a bladed agent, chose not to deploy it. I'm taking that. And their hand is land, land, force of will. Two turns from now, they can hard cast that force. Any blue card they draw turns it on. Infect doesn't have like a ton of blue cards though. Green is their their main color, and blue is the support color in the deck. Ah, oh, come on. All right, well, thoughts ease bug. I'm drawing Chrome Box here, and then I'm going to cast Brainstorm and see three fresh cards and hope one of them's reanimate. Brainstorm, two in tombs. Well, Every single one of my cards I'd want to entomb is not in my deck right now. I boarded out all the echoes, and I could pitch entomb to Chrome Mox. I could put Chrome Mox over in the grave. I'm going to shuffle away the Chrome Mox. I'm going to cast entomb on their end step and hope they think it's a card they need to force. You know, with the tracks already in the graveyard, what are you even worried about? But I'm going to give them the opportunity to force this entomb. Oh, they played Windswept Teeth. I did not see that land. Fetch, fetch, attack for two, and let's hope they think they need to care about this in tomb. Cast the force, cast the force, cast the force. Bummer. Okay, in tomb, 
Or do I have an Entomb? Another Entomb? I mean, that play makes it very clear I have nothing else going on, but I actually don't, and I don't want to draw an Entomb. Okay, Entomb's gone. And I'm going to fetch an Entomb again here. Wait, how many Brainstorms are in my deck? Two? I'm not going to Entomb again. I shouldn't have fetched either. I should have thought about that more. This card is better as a card to Brainstorm away. Oh, uh, they're so smart. Well, uh, I could wait. I'm going to wait. If they... Like, just casting this into five open mana when they have nothing else going on sucks. If they draw, like, another Blighted Agent and think they can add to the board safely. I mean, that actually does add to the board safely, unfortunately. But I could draw Grief here. I could draw something like Bowmaster that might draw out a force. Yeah, I just have to use my Infect Total as a resource and try to have enough cards to get through this force before they can kill me. I'm going to hold on to this Misty Rainforest also. More Brainstorm fodder. Dead to any pump spell at this point. Ink Moth Nexus. They've done a good job adding to the board without tapping out over the last two turns. Pendlehaven and Ink Moth Nexus is sick. Oh, where did this Embiggen come from? Did I lose track of... Oh, did I X out the wrong thing? Yeah, clearly I was just... Didn't know what was going on. All right, yeah, I lost track of something there. Okay. Dead. I don't have any removal I could bring in. I could go... I could leave in one Echo for situations like that. Where I have Entombs and nothing to do with it. That's probably worth doing. It's also just blue for force. And I mentioned Troll of Kazadoom. Making it to a game two. It will not make it to a game three. I've got a grip full of forces and interaction or interaction and dark rituals. I'm going to keep this. Orcish Bowmaster and Brazen Borrower are the only things that could be called removal in my deck. And then Force of Will is actually my only counterspell. It's a pretty reasonable hand, knowing the matchup. I'm just going to fetch the Undercity Sewers now. I'm just really worried about that Stifle that we saw. Sometimes Infect has one or two Wastelands, but with all these Dark Rituals, I'm not worried about it. Another Bowmaster. Let's go. I can Dark Ritual into Double Bowmaster at any point moving forward, which would be completely insane because it, it plays around days if I Dark Ritual Bowmaster, and then it also plays around Invigorate. Okay, do I want a Dark Ritual is the question. Because if I just cast a Bowmaster here, we can have some sort of exchange over it. I'm just going to cast one. The Dark Ritual line is fun. But if they have nothing, this is so much better. And if they have Invigorate, it's still nice to flush it out now. Okay, yeah. Th they had nothing. And their creatures just did the graveyard. That's better than expending a Dark Ritual on nothing. Ink Moth Nexus. Entomb. Okay, cool. Now I have somewhere to put Dark Ritual mana. Because if I was going to Dark Ritual out of Bowmaster to play around days, and then just they don't have days, that sucks. But now if they don't have days, I can Entomb. But now we get to play this cat and mouse game of Infect versus damage-based removal. Firing up the Nexus. So what I'm going to do here is let Nexus hit me, and then I'm going to try to ping it second main. That way, if they have a pump spell to protect it, at least they don't get the dam extra damage and the safe creature. And if they invigorate now, I'm just going to farm it. Okay, end step, dark ritual. I'm going to entomb first. I'm playing around days either way. Just get this attracts out of the way. Or wait, that was supposed to be the echo, wasn't it? Shit, if I untap I just and draw land, I just win? Yeah, that was supposed to be echo. That was bad. Shit. Lucy Goosey, baby. I just forgot that was there. I don't even need a land. I have Dark Ritual. That was literally the whole win. God damn it, Brian. That was such a cool line. Okay. I'm going to attack with some of my creatures. Leave back a blocker. Also leave back a pinger. Yeah, that's so annoying. I had the whole win there. There's the one echo. That would have been so perfect. Even have force backup for it. Shameful stuff. Bajuka Bog. You got me. Bajuka Bog implies the existence of crop rotation in their deck, which there usually is a small package of crop rotation stuff. That's why they play one or two wastelands and not four. The crop rotations get infect creatures. My member! Okay. You can get your one infect through. If you try to pump this thing, I'm going to roast it. End step, Orcish Bowmaster. Bang the Glistener Elf. Oh, they really just don't have a pump spell in their hand. What's going on over there? Back for five. 
I'm prepared to force of will a crop rotation because I actually can't really answer a Ink Moth Nexus otherwise. I could block it with Brazen Borrower, but I'd rather just force the thing that puts it into play. Okay, we won. Missed a very cool line there. I was just busy focusing on the board and forgot about the big picture for a second, but we had the opportunity to just wheel kill them with force backup. Disappointing. Still won the match, though. On to this is this is round four, right? Yeah, we're three and one. Jeez, on to the final round. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw in the final round, and I have a turn one Bowmaster plus Griefu plus Echo. I'm going to keep. This is the most this deck hand that we've had yet. Please play some X1 creature that just dies to damage. That would be great. No, not like this. I hate lands. They're so boring and mean. Maze of Ith, you cop. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, Grief pitching in Tomb. Uh, well, at least I get to take... At least they didn't play Sphere of Resistance on turn one. That would not have been beatable. None of those cards are going to be there in a second. Petal, Island, Bowmaster, Pinya, Echo. If I spin up another Echo, I get to seven them again. I did find another Grief. Okay, they're at 11. I can Grief them again, pitching the Goryeo's Vengeance. Or I should I should pitch the Troll. I got plenty of mana here. Sphere of Resistance, Loam, Dark Depths, Wasteland. Okay, bunch of stuff. Sphere of Resistance, easy take, though. Okay, I mean, that was a pretty good, exciting opening hand. I wish we were on the play. But here we are. This is what we get. Ghost Quarter. I do have another basic in my deck. They could ghost... No, they can't ghost quarter me twice this turn. Savannah, ghost quarter. And ghost quarter was the draw. We know their whole hand. Loam with no target. Ghost quartering me in the upkeep is like the worst time to do that, because now I get mana out of it. Play another Bowmaster. Thanks for the Lotus Petal. Speaking of Lotus Petals, there's a Dark Ritual. And I can just attack for one. Oh, my kingdom for an entomb. Entomb echo here is the GG button. Dredging loam. Found another Dark Depths and a Yavamaya. Those don't really change any information. There's Wasteland. Loam targeting Ghost Quarter and Dark Depths. Okay. They did, unfortunately, get Wasteland here. If I... I may search, right? Okay. So if I get the... No, I, I have to... I have to protect my land here. Okay. I'm out of these. Draw for turn. Please be in tomb. Another land. Okay. I will attack for this much. And if I'm willing to get wastelanded, I think I am willing to get wastelanded. So I have enough lands here that I can still echo if I draw one, even if I get wasted. And this adds to the attack force in a significant way. It dredged a bunch of stuff that was not Thespian stage. The Sagas are good, but might not have enough time for that. Loam targeting Quarter Saga Saga. 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 Okay, I'm already exposed to Wasteland, which means I get the Surveil Land for free here. Nice. All right. Surveil Land, find me the Echo. Let's close it out. Or the Entomb. Undercity Sewers. Reanimate. I don't need more of those. Come on, deck. Give me the goods. Not the goods. Opponent will go to two here. Okay. This is going to be a tight one. Tight down the stretch. I'm still in the spot where I can draw in tomb and win. Okay, their loam hit Bajuka Bog, which I don't care about currently. If they make two Saga tokens, they can go to one and lose a Saga token. Uh, they're so close to stability here. They didn't pick up the Yavimaya earlier, and two of the lands in their hand don't tap for mana. This might be a bit of a squeeze for them. 
But Seiju does tap for mana. Ghost Quarter also taps for mana. Or kills my land. Alright, deck. It's time. I'm not going to fetch because I have cantrips. I love an Entomb. Hall Breacher. That is a creature, but not in a useful capacity. Oh, wait. They have to double block Grief. I think they're just dead here. They have two blockers. They're at two life. They have two blockers and a Maze of Ith. Or no, they can Maze of Ith the Grief. Jump block the Orc army. And I push one damage through and I lose a Bowmaster. Is that how this works? Yes. Okay. Push one damage through, lose a Bowmaster. Deal. Now that reanimate I milled looks really good. But Hall Breacher is a surprise bonus creature. This is not a deck that really draws cards. Even in its draw step, it frequently doesn't draw cards. Sagas are happening. They, they probably have something like Soul Guide Lantern in their Saga package that they could get here. They have to decide how many creatures they can afford to make versus tutors they can tutor for versus how many land drops they have versus trying to assemble Merit Lage versus does Merit Lage actually win the game. One life is a tight place to be. Okay, I'm going to fetch in response. I don't think they really have the room to fetch for Pithing Needle here, but I'm not going to give them a double stone rain if they do. But they could get Expedition Map for Tabernacle. That sucks. Wasteland's in the graveyard. Ghost Quarter's face up. Yeah, Pithing Needle and, Ta and Expedition Map. If both are in the deck and there's a Tabernacle, then I wasn't going to be able to beat this. Expedition Map confirmed. Horrifically, if this Gorio's Vengeance was Shallow Grave, they'd be dead already. I just ping them with Bowmaster. Soul Guide Lantern is in. Echo still does it. Because they don't really have priority to exile that before it's happening to them. I'm getting ghost quartered. Low to blue. I'm going to put the Hall Breacher out here. If Tabernacle is their plan, that sucks. But also, okay. They still have two more land drops. They can put me to zero. But if they use two land drops, then they can't play Tabernacle. Wasteland. Flow to blue, flow to black. And if they leave me with even one land, I could Dark Ritual pay for a bunch of creatures. Okay. Yeah, I get the Tabernacle here. Yes. Okay, Flash and Hall Breacher. They have one land drop left. It's the Tabernacle. Wastelands in their hand. Dark Ritual for the win here. Triggers. Dark Rit. Bang. What do you say, opponent? You got anything else for this? Because I'm ready to go to the next game. Yes, all right, tight one. Okay, uh, we're playing against lands. Voidwalker's coming in, Hearst coming in. First time I've won in my graveyard, hate. Herx, Brazen Borrower. I don't think I want Force of Will. They are very good against graveyard strategies. They're not always great against combo strategies, but for the first time in the league, the, the big O's are coming out. Grief is kind of barely worth it, too. I'm going to leave some in Tombs in and... Uh, and at least a few echoes because I think that angle of the deck is actually really good and I could cut a chrome mox if I'm cutting all this other stuff okay I'm gonna try it like this let's go one land no nothing fast no scam no not basic I'm gonna mulligan this okay I like this a lot better and I'm probably gonna bottom Either Dark Ritual or Chrome Mox. I just have to decide which one I can live without. I could also bottom the sewers, find that, fetch that up later, and pitch the Dark Ritual to Chrome Mox as a more permanent and difficult to disrupt mana source. All right, yeah, I'm going to bottom the sewers. Talk myself into it. Opponent's on a deep mulligan, down to five. No ley line. Horizon Canopy, Elvish Reclaimer. We had a deal not to play any creatures. Oh my god! Well, we had a deal. I'm going to hold you to it. The fun of one of Liliana of the Veil. Vale. You can sacrifice that. You won't need it. Not where you're going. Which is the garbage. Okay. I mean, lands is a deck that could come back from this start pretty easily. Like, if they just have a loam, I'm in trouble. Okay, I'm going to plus Liliana and hope they don't discard a life from the loam. I'm going to discard this Chrome Mox. Shit. <laughs> they discarded a life from the loam. All right. Well, hard mode back on. And I don't currently have a Dothy Voidwalker or anything to punish that. They did take a Natty draw step, though. That means they're trying to Saga. 
Blue to Delta. I'll play that because that could fetch either basic. Plussing here actually feels dangerous. I'm going to still do it, though. I'm going to plus discard a land. This loam can just recoup all these cards at any point, but I need to play on tempo because I'm not getting this done any other way. They get a Saga token. Still not dredging loam. I'm going to fetch basic swamp here just to dodge the Pithing Needle, just in case. I mean, Pithing Needle names Liliana in this spot, so maybe that didn't even make sense. Discarded a Maze of Ith. Do they have another loam after all this? Oh no, they just have Dark Depths. Uh, this is actually kind of cool. I mean, now I can't Brazen Borrow the, the Construct, but I can trade with it. Or I can just leave Liliana in play at two. Do I want to block or do I want to race? Liliana doesn't matter. All right. You're in for two. All Breacher's in play. Changed my mind. I'd rather have this in case I rip the... Oh, if I hit Echo right now. All right, deck. Rubbing my hands together. Undercity Sewers flip the Echo. Let's go. Shit. All right. Miss your Force in the graveyard. I'm not going to plus Liliana unless they try to block this thing. Which I wouldn't attack if I didn't have an answer for. All right, pass the turn. You get a 2020. You quickly lose a 2020. And then we are racing. Uh, I'm actually going to let them. I'm going to stop in their draw step. See if they're going to dredge this loam. And they did. Okay. I'm going to bounce the Merit Lage now. Wanted to see if they would take a draw and maybe make different decisions with their life. The dredge is like pretty clearly correct, but wanted to give them a chance to be wrong. Urza Saga's back. The race is on. They are deciding to kill Liliana rather than protect from this three-point attack, which is legal, but I'm glad they did it. Uh, I'm going to sandbag the Lotus Petal. I don't think it helps me to be in play at all. That's being stage. There is a Hercules recall in my deck somewhere. End step, Brazen B. Brainstorm. All right, let's find the goods. Just find an Echo right now. Let's set it off. Oh, that's so close. The Brazen Bar was sick. Um, so who do I want? What do I want to do here? I put back LED Lotus Petal and play Dothy Voidwalker and then go to combat. Yeah, put back LED and Petal. Play Voidwalker. All right, should I attack first? I think I should attack first. Yeah, all right, I'm going to attack first. Because the thing that would die in combat here is not a card anyway. And now it's time to trade the Hall Breacher. Because I know I'm not drawing an Echo before this game's going to be over one way or the other. And then Voidwalker. Another unblockable creature. I'm going to have to tempo through a Shadow Spear if that's a card they play. But Life from the Loam just got a lot worse. And I know they're holding Dark Depths, but I'm holding my second answer to Merit Lage. And I get a Saga in the Void if I want it. Okay, they do have a Shadow Spear, but didn't make a creature. They can't make Merit Lage if they equip Shadow Spear. They gotta make some decisions here. Okay, just main phasing this baddie. In for three. An Orcish Bowmaster wins me the game here. Or no, I'm drawing a Lotus Petal. I already know where, where, where this game's going. Okay, never mind. I take it back. Petty Theft, the Merit Lage. Again. Another one. And then Lotus Petal casts this Brazen Borrower, and I can outmuscle the Shadow Spear with them at one. Okay, they get back for four, they go to five, and then I have nine unblockable power. This looks good, team. They could dredge loan, pick up a Maze of Ith, and absorb some of this, but then whatever they dredge is gone and the loam is gone. Might be necessary, though. But if they do that, they can't equip Shadow Sphere. That's not a solution. Rift Stone Portal. Two cards in hand. I believe one of them's an Urza Saga. I think we know that from earlier. Yep, Shadow Sphere, 4-4. Four, four. Tapping Horizon Canopy kills you. Oh yeah, that's that's funny. I just consider I just considered that also. End of turn. Boop boop boop. Here we go. Did we get there? This looks good. Wow, a 4-1 record. Only loss was to, to some goblin run goods. Okay, uh, I was worried about this deck just being kind of a mess when I went in. And I still think it might be, but it's a powerful mess. And the scam show is obviously tried, true, tested, not that interesting or new, or should not be surprising that it's good. Orcish Bowmaster... In some of the games that I won, I did draw two or three Bowmasters and just pile them on. And then the Echo thing came up a couple of times. 
reanimating Atraxa came up a couple of times. Never did the Grizzlebrand Gorios thing, unfortunately. Never quite popped there, but those are both one ofs, and it's uh, only five matches. You need a lot more matches before you see how good that actually is. Sideboard might also be a mess. It's certainly not mapped out well, even if the cards do make some sense. There is more work to do to polish this out, but I am extremely pleased with a 4-1 record on the first outing with this build of this contraption. Elijah, thank you for the invitation to play this deck and work on it with you. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.